Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are in the country. I'm Deb Barrett, and today's webinar for our Ryan series is the Designer's Guide to Traversing Systems. And welcome to the Designer's Guide for Traversing Systems. And I thought we'd all sort of get on the same page and start out just basically defining what a traversing system is. And there's really two families. There's that basic white goods, which includes your, you know, Travis rod, both um, heavy duty and regular duty. Travis rods usually come as single or double, um, typically used for pinch pleats only, and really should be hidden because they're white goods. They're not really pretty. So either up into pockets or covered with a valance or a cornice of some sort, which by the way, can add to the budget that you're working with when you're working with the client, obviously. Then there's architectural tracks, which are um, contract grade, in a lot of cases um, have certain specialty features that make them either heavy duty, they function better, for example, ball bearing glides or slides. Architectural tracks can be cord or baton drawn and can also be used for ripple fold and or pinch pleat. And they're available as single tracks. On the other side, or the other family, is d the decorative side. Now you've got decorative drapery hardware with a cord. This is a traversing system. Typically, they're metal and a, or metal and plastic combinations. They're a telescoping rod. They come with C rings. Some come without, and they're meant for pinch pleats. Then there's what I call the sort of custom decorative traversing systems. These are a combination of an architectural track, like you can get in basic white goods, and iron or wood or some sort of fascia system. They're available with or without rings. You can get them pinch pleat or <clears throat> ripple fold. You can get fascia systems for them from a variety of manufacturers, and you can also motorize them. So though you really have a lot more options to present to your client when you start working in traversing systems that are that custom decorative um, section. But it really is all about a balancing act when you're talking about traversing systems. Just decorative hardware, um, you know, as a subject with your clients um, anyway. Drapery hardware, you know, whether it's wood or metal or plastic or resin, it's basically what holds up your soft custom designs. And there's um, the balancing act between what the client really expects, because she's asking you in some cases for privacy, for function, for light control. Uh, you know, I want to have privacy, but I need to see the view. Um, maybe she was talking energy efficiency, and then throw in that that she wants the fashion element and the design aesthetic, and by the way, she wants all of this in a budget. So um, usually uh, the, your drapery hardware is purchased by either a workroom or w uh, purchased by the designer. Um, and so that's where the designer considerations come in as a second part of the balancing act. Because we've got to consider the space that's around the window. Is the fabric that we're choosing, is that going to be appropriate for the mounting system that we're going to be using? What are the limitations? Whether it's in the hardware or with the window or what have you. How flexible can I be? What are my challenges there? And then installation challenges because we've got to, you know, get it installed. And again, all within the budget that the client wants us to meet. So when should you use traversing systems? Because we have a lot of options out there. We can do poles, we can do curtain rods, we can do you know basic white goods, both functioning and non-functioning. And right now we've done a lot of combination treatments, which are blinds and shades and shutters, if you will, with stationary side panels. So we're selling a lot of decorative hardware possibly, but we're selling French poles and you know wood two inch, inch and three quarters with finials because they're holding just basically stationary panels. What we're seeing is definitely a trend toward more functioning um, draperies and layering of draperies as a trend. And so um, with that comes um, the ability and, and, and the need, I should say, to start using traversing systems. So when do you use it? 
Well, when your customer is asking you for functioning drapery treatments, again, is it a white rod or a decorative rod? That functions because maybe she's not asking you for functioning but she's telling you she wants it to be easy to use she wants to be it to be convenient she wants to grab a cord and pull it she doesn't want to do hand-drawn batons and, and all that kind of stuff especially if you're working with older clients because they're they're um, they prefer I find um, the corded systems over the hand-drawn and uh, having to maneuver and you know, make sure there's silicone and all that other stuff that has to happen in some cases. Um, maybe the drapery specifications require it. One thing that designers don't often think about is drapery weight. And when you're doing um, drapery panels in multiple widths that are using upholstery weight or mid-weight fabrics that are lined in inner line, your weight is very key to making sure you're choosing the correct mounting system and maybe that has to be a, tra a traversing system. And then what about motorization? You know, definitely wanting to do something that's decorative if you're um, doing motorization. What about design intent? That's where sort of the hardware becomes the top treatment. She spends her money instead of on a valance in um, in the sort of finishing touches of the decorative hardware. And then maybe solutions to some of the challenging windows or the problems that the client has um, told you about. You know, a lot of times traversing systems can offer multiple answers to the client's needs and wants. You can give her her view and her privacy and black everything out in sleeping, all three things with a traversing system and, and a drapery panel. So typically, no matter who you're buying your traversing system from, you've basically got your, your rod with a track behind it, in some cases, some cases not, rings or without rings if you specified it. You always have a master carrier, both um, overlap front and back. You have an affineal that's going to be attached to it. It's a corded system. By the way, I want to mention that um, the corded systems with all drapery hardware do fall under the corded window safety standard. That's maybe why you're seeing new tension devices that have been packaged with some of the drapery hardware that you're getting. So you want to make sure that, that by the way, that is installed properly per the manufacturer's instructions. And if you have any questions about whether or not um, it has it is compliant to the standard. You can certainly call customer service and they can provide you with that documentation. Um, in this case, this is a double traversing rod, so you would also have a back track and, and rod fascia and probably an end cap versus double finials, though um, that's again a design intent choice. And then of course your mounting brackets and your support brackets. So what do you need to consider when you're going to use a traversing system? Well, first of all, the draw, mounting, you know, where are you going to mount this? We've chosen a mounting system. Now I've got to decide where and how I'm going to mount it. Pin sets and ring drops. Weights, we talked about that um, just a bit earlier, but we'll go into that more in depth. And then header styles. So first off, the draw in traversing system. You can get left stacks, center draws, right stacks, you know, and basically your brackets are typically, especially in Orion, I think this is a nice um, feature of Orion hardware. With their traversing systems, the brackets are packaged based on your draw system. And what I mean by that is um, the end brackets would be vertical and would have vertical legs. And on a center draw, for example, you'd get two vertical end brackets. But on a left or a right, you're going to get one vertical end bracket that can be hidden by the drapery. And then you're going to get a horizontal bracket for the end so that it's not showing, if you will, so that you don't have this happening, which you can see in that picture. So they, um, so you can also request horizontal support brackets as part of um, 
your order. If for some reason your leg is too deep for the space of which you're going to mount it. For example, maybe between a stacked window scenario or a transom scenario where, or a bay where maybe you only have um, two inches before a soffit, for example. Here's a tip for those of you that um, are doing doors and one-way rights or one-way lefts. Now, typically, this is, this is what a one-way um, left panel would look like. And a lot of us don't like to do it because we feel that it's, you know, if we're a balanced person or your client is all about symmetry and balance, it really is unbalanced when it's drawn open. So what we really prefer is this look with a pair of draperies. But if you have a sliding glass door, you can't always do that. So what you can specify is a dead panel for your workroom, and then you can order your traversing system from Orion um, with these couple of tweaks. So basically what you would do is you would order, you would extend the bracket to bracket a bit so that you can open the door. You would then um, or uh, open the view on a slider. And let's say this is going to be a one-way draw left. So then what I would order is a traversing system that is one-way draw left. I would order a end stop because the left panel would come in and stop right here. The overlap in the um, master carrier would come under it. And then I would order additional rings for the right side, and I would hang a stationary panel on it. So essentially, when it functions, one butts into the other, but when they're open, they look like a pair of draperies. Mounting heights. You know, you can do inside, you can do outside. Typically, traditionally, we suggest that you always extend four inches above the window and that you extend between four and 12 inches above the frame and probably four inches out on either side. Now, that can vary based on, you know, the elevation, where the window is. Are you having to do pairs or offset pairs? You know, are you layering? All those kinds of things. But knowing those guidelines gives you a start of where am I going to place that hard hardware. And then when you're looking at that hardware, and let's say you're mounting it um, a minimum of four to eight inches above the frame, um, because you know your legs, if you're doing a vertical bracket, is is a typically two to two and a half inches, depending on your manufacturer. So you have to be up at least that amount um, onto the wall. But then you've got to check to make sure that you've got room for your rods and your finials. And how does that bracket attach to that traversing system? Do you have to lift it up? to bend it, to hook it onto something, because you thought, oh, no, you know, I've got enough room for my finial, but if you have to lift it up, sometimes even if you're down three or four inches from the ceiling line and your finial's large, you can catch it. You know, I have to take those finials off, put them back on, all those kinds of scenarios. Um, to make sure that you know where you're mounting them, I love these installation template kits. Um, if you don't have one, they are awesome for, I don't care what hardware you're using, white goods, decorative, traversing systems. Um, these are for, available from RH Rolly. This is your center support. This is your end bracket. And as you can see, you can mark up from the frame. You can mark down from the ceiling. How many of us haven't gone over to mark an end bracket and measured over and then measured down and kind of eyeballed where that mark is and, you know, hope beyond hope that everything's level and then if it isn't we take out one screw and bend it back or move it down a quarter of inch or whatever with these templates by the way you, I believe they're packaged together so you get both of them together you're going to be accurate on your mounting heights and then pin set um, if you're not using a pin setter it's always handy I keep this little card this written on a card in my uh, car with my toolkit in case I forget what it is. But pins are an important part of this. And I've seen uh, workrooms use light duty pointed or light duty round pins on a lined and inner lined drapery that I'm going to hang on a traversing system. And what happens is these babies bend right away. So you want to make sure that your workroom is pinning with heavy duty um, duty pins and that your installer is knowing where exactly do you want it. Do you want, do you want the top of that, that pleat um, panel to be rubbing just underneath the traversing system or not? 
Now there's something called span in traversing systems and in drapery hardware, and span is the length of a section of rod between two brackets, the span. A couple of things to note. The rods increase in rigidity as you increase in diameter. So your span can get larger the farther out, the larger your diameter is. So for example, I could go probably 80 some inches on a one inch diameter and only about 60 to 70 inches in a half inch diameter. And where that plays into um, everything is drapery weights, and strength and rigidity, but keep in mind that all rod strength is still dependent on how you're mounting into the system. Are you using, you know, a toggle bolt? What kind of toggle surface are you using? Are you into a substrate that's wood um, behind drywall? Is it plaster? You know, concrete? You need to know all those kinds of things as a designer when you're specifying because you got to make sure that you're choosing the right system and the right traversing system. Along with span comes something that's called bracket to bracket maximum, which is basically the maximum point where the rod will sag or bow without a center support. All manufacturers can tell you this. So if you were to call Orion and order whether it was a traversing system and or um, even one of our pole systems or curtain poles, we can, they can tell you what is recommended based on the diameter and the type of uh, rod, what is recommended for space between um, supports. Now figuring drapery rods. Here are a couple of guidelines. Um, when you're working with white Travis rod with treatments that are 84 inches or less, you can typically figure a pound and a half to two pounds a foot as long as you're using multiple center supports. If you're going over 84 inches in length on your finish length on your drapery, you can fi figure a pound to a pound and a half a foot for multiple center supports. What I mean by that is that the shorter the finish length, the more weight a white Travis rod can take. The longer the drapery finish length, the less weight, one pound per foot, a white Travis rod can take. It's good to know this when you're doing um, multiple widths, lined and interlined, and then you go in and you know um, spec a Kirsch heavy duty 3025. It's probably they're going to pull out of the wall. It's going to be difficult to traverse for the client. You're going to have issues with it. That's why you really need to upgrade to architectural track or to decorative traversing systems. Now in decorative traversing systems, we recommend at Orion that a 16 foot track anchored with heavy duty brackets will hold up to 62 pounds of drapery. So that's a really heavy duty system because you'll see on the next slide when I show you how to figure um, drapery weights that typically a lined and interlined panel is about two pounds a foot, so on a 16 foot track that's going to be more like 32 pounds versus 62 pounds. So we, you know, we're, we err on the um, side of um, the, a better, you know, and heavier duty. So how do you figure your drapery rates? Well, if you're figuring yardages or you're you charting out your yardages and know what your yardages are, these are three simple formulas. Typically, if it's a regular weight drapery fabric, meaning like um, a cotton print, okay? If you're doing something that, or a silk, if you will, or a linen, a basic linen, um, but if you're doing something that's upholstery weight, or embroidered, or wool, or whatever, that will change your numbers. But as an estimate, this is an estimate too, by the way, regular drapery fabric, that has a lining, you typically rate weighs three quarters of a pound per yard. If you add blackout to that fabric, it's about one pound. If you line an interline or you blackout an interline, it's about a pound and a half. I typically err on the again on the on the side of more, and I when I'm figuring drapery rates, multiply by two pounds. So what you would do is 
take your total yardage that you have for your face fabric and multiply it by one of those following numbers. That will tell you how much your drapery is going, going to weigh. Again, this is an estimate. If you're anywhere near there and you're not sure and you think these are going to be heavy, you know, call your manufacturer to ask what the recommended weights are for the track that you're purchasing. And then last, things to consider when you're using traversing systems is what type of header styles do you want? Do you want a ripple fold? Very popular right now. Lots of issues coming up with ripple folds. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Or, or do you want a pleated? It could be a pinch pleat, a euro pleat, a goblet pleat. You know, again, that's part of the design aesthetic. But remember, when you get into um, some of the more unique pleating styles, you will have some challenges. For example, if you're doing a goblet pleat, the stack, because of the size of the um, goblet, is going to be larger. So if the customer needs a small stack or a tight stack, goblet isn't the choice you want. Um, inverted box pleats, or some people call them a tuxedo pleat. They just do not stack well on a traversing system. They're really meant to be more of a um, stationary header style. You can put them on a traversing system. These are just things that when you're selling this look to your client, you want to make her aware of. It's a little bit more sloppier look because they kind of come in and out. Um, remember with pleated systems, no matter what, even though the um, rod is falling or the panel is falling below the rod, you're going to want to crack your buckram. Now, ripple folds. Ripple folds um, are this sort of or wave draperies have a much um, more um, casual, contemporary look, a modern look, if you will. There's not a lot of structure to the top. There isn't four inches of buckram. Someone asked me the other day, should a ripple fold have buckram in it? The answer is no. If it's not made, if it does, it's not made correctly. It's using a snap tape, and I'll show you some of the um, pieces and components to come with it when we talk about ordering and specifying in a minute. But one of the issues, because there isn't a lot of structure up here, and because a lot of the fabrics that are being chosen are polyesters or synthetics, is you're getting flaring at the bottom. They're not staying in these even folds. Who knows how long it took them. And you can even see how they're falling out, even though it's probably been stapled and glued and whatever um, to get that style, that picture styled. So, you know. Though the client likes these looks, you still need to make her aware, even on a decorative traversing system, what some of the issues she's going to have. Because no matter what system you sell her, if, you're, if they aren't pretty, um, then they're coming back. One of the things that you want to consider when you're using traversing systems, because that usually means that you're doing multiple widths, and, um, you know, have some challenges with wanting the folds to um, fold back easily. Remember, fabric has a memory, so if you do steam when it's appropriate, um, it will steam the fold in, and when you draw them open and close, it'll go back into place. But if you're doing ripple folds and or pleated draperies with multiple widths on traversing systems, consider a memory stitch. And it's basically a stitch that your workroom will put on from a tack and the length of, of um, heavy crochet thread to the next fold. Think of it like the old beaded chain we used to get on verticals and how they controlled the vein and didn't allow the vein to, to blow out of the door, for example, or um, they kept them in line. So memory stitch, some people call it flagging hems. Um, I think Lafayette calls it stay pleat. Every workroom has a little bit different name for it, but this is something that should be specified on your drapery. So how do you specify traversing systems? Well, again, what are you trying to accomplish? What is it that the client wants? Work that balancing act. What are the performance expectations of the hardware? You know, again, hand-drawn versus cord-drawn traversing systems. And then how does it need to operate for the client? What's the client's style? Is she looking for sleek and contemporary and the 
you know, is there a theme? What's the design intent? Knowing, once you've answered all those questions and where to mount them and headers and that, then for ordering with Orion and a traversing system, you basically need to choose whether you, once you've chosen the designer choice system, you need to decide whether you want it with or without rings. You want to know what kind of headers you're going to tell them, whether it's pinch pleat or pleated and or a ripple fold. And if you choose a ripple fold, you're going to tell them whether it's 80%, 100%, or 120% because that will determine the number of glides. Your bracket to brackets, you need to choose your finials. What's your draw, center, left, or right? Do you need a longer cord? Eight feet is standard. Uh, do you need a baton in hand-drawn? Um, I would stay away from those. I, I think traversing systems were made to be corded personally. And then do you need to order additional support brackets because of the um, installation or a challenge with the installation? And do you need more glides? Other things you want to think about is, you know, how many pleats are in those, in those um, panels? Because if you up the fullness, you'll have more pleats. So do you have enough rings? And then don't forget about a, you know, a ring for a leading edge. If you, you know, on your master carriers, those will always come. And I'll show you some of the little features that we do later that are kind of nice. What about returns? Are you ordering them the right size? Is the bracket you're using going to work with that projection that you need and the return? Do you have enough brackets? Is the center support um, going to be interf interfered with in any way? Now, obviously, if it's hand-drawn, it would interfere with m movement possibly. But again, do you have space to put it? You know, sometimes you've got a keystone or all kinds of different things happening. And then your finial lengths and widths, have you taken that into consideration? And last but not least, the budget. You know, most of the categories of our traversing systems are basically good, better, best. But my point is don't sell the cheap. Sell the functionality. Start at the top. Work yourself down when you're selling decorative hardware of any kind. And certainly sell convenience and function and not maintenance and um, function nightmares. You know, the general rule whether you're selecting any type of drapery hardware, is to choose the very best rods that the client can afford. So let's talk a bit about some of our traversing hardware systems. Um, Designer's Choice comes up to 30 feet in length, and we've got about 200 different finials that are going to fit on it. You're going to be uh, able to get these in um, 35 iron finishes, 11 wood finishes, we can do custom finishes for you, or in the Italian collection, there are six finishes. So you've got, basically what I'm saying here is loads and loads of options. The other thing is, is you can order things in double or single tracks. So if you're starting to do more layering, like shears and over draperies, you certainly can use our track systems. Um, front track can come with or without rings. The back track typically comes without rings. It just gets a little busy, especially across multiple widths and long lengths. Um, the heavy-duty track, you're going to want to uh, specify the color because we now offer it in white, black, gold, and antique bronze. So good news here is you're not um, choosing an aged bronze, uh, bronze traversing system and have a white track behind it. Um, not great because they do peek a boo through, as you know. Um, again, you can get 16 feet of track without a splice. You can get up to 30 feet with a splice, and the splice is on the um, on the track, not on the fascia ish. And you remember, if you're going to go over um, for shipping, you know, keep in mind your UPS and freight sizes, um, depend if you're doing these long widths. We uh, pull, do cord pullers, um, all your safety tension devices are in there, and then heavy duty brackets. So you can get iron or wood as a single track. You can get um, it in one and a half and two inch diameters. You can select any of your finials from any of those collections, including the crystal. You can get smooth, hammered, square, or fluted styles. And again, 
up to oh, 35 uh, plus finishes. If you're working in an Ita Italian collection because your customer's wanting something that's a little blingy and or um, contemporary, you've got six finishes, both round and square, and those are available in inch and a half and two inch diameters. I love this crystal, facet crystal on this square brush nickel rod. That's really beautiful. And then what you're getting is heavy duty glides, you know, cord system, really heavy duty bracket. You're, get, you're getting it all for the client. You can do single wood um, in <clears throat> both the iron art and the wood art finishes. So you're over 50 finishes, basically. You can get it in two inch, two and a quarter, and three inch diameters for the fascia. You can do double, both in iron and wood. Again, in the same diameters. Um, and the back rod comes with a smaller diameter fascia so that it is a little cleaner and sleeker. As you can see here, this is a double track. And you've got rings on the front and no rings on the back. And you can do double Italian tracks. Again, with the smaller um, diameter matching fascia to the back side. With our traversing systems, they can be bent or curved. Again, great for bow windows, bays. Um, it's awesome. In double wood tracks, you can get, again, the two, two and a quarter, and three inch diameters, and you're getting the smaller fascia on the back, and you're getting the opportunity to pick from any of the wood art or the crystal finials, smooth, fluted, or roped styles, and then um, 50 plus finishes. In wood, we also miter returns for you if you don't want a finial. So if you want that sort of French pole look, here you see the twisted with the rings. And as I said, we supply heavy duty track in four colors, the, the white, the black, the antique bronze, and the gold. And then you're also getting your glides to color match. So you're getting the gold, sort of a bronzy gray, the black, and the white. These are all ball-bearing uh, glides, so they move really well. Heavy-duty brackets. All these specifications are in your catalog, or you can get all this information online, which is really nice if you're having to figure out projections, returns, mounting space. Because as you can see, I want to point this out, this is a four and a half inch leg. Now this is an end bracket, so that leg is going to be covered on a, on the um, by the drapery panel, whether it's a center, left, or right draw. But remember, if you're wanting them above the trim, you're already automatically four and a half inches up for mounting. We also do fascia styles, which is, gives you sort of a decorative look, which is a finished rod behind it. We can do um, bypass systems. You have eight different designs in sleek fascia. You can do single or double systems. The brackets are uh, color matched to the fascia, and you get the heavy-duty track also. In Tuscany, this is sort of our lightweight. This is the Tuscany cornice system, which they're now putting as a fascia, which is this embossed um, metal. I believe it's aluminum. And you can get this traversing hardware up to 30 feet in length. Again, you have the choice of almost 200 finials. Um, heavy-duty track. Everything is the same as what you're getting from the designer's choice traversing system, which is our most popular, with or without rings, ceiling or wall mount, 35 finishes on some of these embossed looks, which is um, a nice, a decorative um, look to it. Here are the styles that are available. And coming, this is just one of our new 2014 WCMA award winners. This is Deco Light Traversing. So it's basically a much more lightweight and contemporary look for um, motorization and or core drawn. You've got eight different designs. And uh, you're, it's available in all of the iron art finishes and the Italian finishes. So that's the chrome, the satin nickel, the satin gold. Um, and as you can see, it's just it's a um, fascia piece on a heavy-duty architectural track, or that architectural track, which is Kirsch, by the way, um, is motorized. 
So last, let's talk about traversing systems with motorization. And this is, to me, this is definitely the wave of the future. I can't tell you in the last six months how much more motorization I've been doing, and partially because the client is asking for it, partially because the scenario really calls for it, and partially because of cord safety, it just makes sense to motorize. So um, at Orion, they use the Sum use Sumfy. If you're not familiar with Sumfy, it's a French company that's also in the U.S., based in New Jersey, and they're really the world's leader in manufacturing specialized motors. And by the way, if you're working with um, a home automation guy or a, a client who already has a home automation system, typically Sumfy um, does talk nice to the um, <clears throat> home automation system so you can motorize and integrate right into those systems. So what do you get when you're traversing with Sumfy motorization? Well you get all the things that Designer Choice and Tuscany does whether it's our iron or wood rods, you're going to get 30 feet of track, you're going to get heavy duty track in four colors, you're going to get wall or ceiling mounts, you're going to get all those finishes in those 200 finials and you're going to get motorization with a smooth, quiet um, motor that Sumfy provides for, um, for the tracks. So wh what componentry do you get when you're ordering a um, traversing system with Sumfy motorization? Well, this happens to be a double, but you can also order single, but you're going to get a finial, an end cap if you're doing double, you're going to get your track, with your de your um, decorative uh, fascia to the front, heavy duty t track, you're going to get wall all your brackets. You're going to get um, your motors, whether you're motorizing one or the other, and you're also going to get your drapery return hook, your transmitter, and um, your deco flex. If you're going to do, you get a five channel. You can get uh, more channels. There's additional charge for that. You get a, a five channel. Um, wall unit. This is what the Sumfy traversing system in track looks like. So you get same master carriers, you get ball bearings, this is a pinch pleat pinch, this is what the carriers look like in ripple fold. This is very standard for um, all tracks, whether it's motorized or not. Your return hook, your return snap, whether it's snap for ripple, fold, return hook for pinch pleat, and then this is what snap take looks like if some of you aren't familiar with it. The fullness is controlled in a ripple fold by the distance between the snaps, 80%, 100%, 120%. Get a heavy duty carrier, keep this in mind, depending on where, you know, what your draw is, you have a motor that's about 12 inches. Okay, it's typically hidden behind a drapery panel, but if you're doing shears, it will shadow. Also notice the end here, and the on both ends, is a little bit different than the typical traversing system. And I'll give you a tip about that in a minute, which is, go back, you need to specify larger returns on both sides because of the motor and because of the, this is a belt drive system, because of the return, um, you need larger returns than normal. My other suggestion is I would also specify larger overlaps. If your workroom standard's three and a half, I'd go to four. Otherwise they look like they're sort of being pulled into the center. They'll hang better. So again, with traversing with Sumfy, we can do iron, we can do Tuscany, we can do wood, we can do single, we can do double, we can do um, you know, motorization on both ends, plug-in, hardwire, as long as you have a um, you know, Cat5 laid for home automation and you have some sort of, whether it's quick disconnect or a plug-in for hardwire, and you can do remote control through that power source. Here it is with a cornice over it. Here it is bent and curved, which is awesome. Again, some people think that you can't do motorization with bent, you know, on bows or on corner windows, where in fact you can. 
some of the things that we've done to the Sumphy motorization um, collection that we have is right now when you order rings you're going to get two stationary rings placed on each end for center draws and one ring placed on the stack side for one-way draws okay this this um, allows um, so the drapery doesn't want to pull away from the wall and for the return. You're going to get pulley covers like this and motor covers like that um, that finish to the rod. So again, you're not going to get white peeking out. It's all going to sort of go seamlessly and be integrated together, which is a nice little um, tip also. And you're going to get the choice of color glides and tracks. They also use a heavy-duty carrier, which reduces friction. And by the way, when you do motorization, you can really hold a lot more weight. But notice, these are your heavy-duty carriers. This is an overlap carrier. This is your butt master carrier. You use a butt master typically um, in contract or with ripple folds. But you can see what I'm saying. It's a great carrier system, but you are going to want to um, make sure that you Give, have enough overlap for it to wrap around from here to here. So what about the motors? Because that's the most important part. Well, there's two motor sizes that we do. They're easy to set up. We use the Glidea 60 and the 35. So with the 60, you can hold up to 132 pounds of drapery. And with the 35, up to 77 pounds. That's a lot of drapery. A lot of drapery. And basically, it's easy setup. You plug them, you know, you hang the traversing system. You plug in your, uh, <clears throat> to the motor, whether it's your right side or your left side. It's basically plug and play. Um, you don't necessarily have to hard wire. If, if you have an outlet nearby where a drapery panel would be hidden, you could certainly just do this, plug your power into, you know, an existing outlet. This chart is available to you, and I won't spend a lot of time going over it, but it gives you the differences in the benefits and features between the two motors. If your client is asking you about it, talks to you about um, the one thing that you do get with the Glidea 60 is you get an adjustable um, speed. And if for what, whatever reason, if somebody grabs the leading edge to want to pull it shut, it will start the motor. So there's a touch motion sensor to it, which is really nice because on some motorization, if you don't have that uh, option, what happens is if they're tugging on the leading edge, they're going to burn the motor and mess up the belt. So this is all your control options and colors and things that you can get from motorization. And then some finishing touches that we do is when you're ordering the rings, we'll add those stationary rings on both ends or one end if it's a one-way draw. And the other thing we're going to give you is a small 5 8 inch tube that prevents gapping between the fascia and the track. So again, you're not getting any kind of peekabooing or seeing what I call underpinnings or infrastructure when you're ordering a, a motorized rod. When you're measuring, you're going to want to measure from basically track width is from base of finial to base of finial. There's a half inch here between the motor on each side. So know that your drive pulley is going to be one inch less in length than, or you need to add one inch to your track width. Okay, does anybody have any questions for us? And in, in, while you're typing in your questions, Ella is going to give us, I'm going to call us up here, going to draw some names for us. So call it back up. The first drawing that we're going to do is, come on guys, is for the designer bag. And so what you're going to get is a really great bag, all the catalogs. Um, you're going to get um, six finial samples in six different finishes, and then you're out getting the finish selector. Um, so, Ella, can you, who's going to be our winner? So the designer bag winner is Richard Helton. Congratulations, Richard. Our second drawing 
is for the new binder that includes all of our finish selectors, which is in a nice chip. You can pull them in and out, and it's um, a nice way to show different finishes to your clients or when you're working with fabrics. And that winner is Heather Taylor. Congratulations, Heather. So Heather and Richard, in your question box, will you please type in your contact information and shipping address so that we can get these items off to you? That would be really helpful. Thank you so much, and watch forum coming in the next week or so, 10 days. OK, so questions and answers. Um, OK, will this PowerPoint be available via email? Uh, no, Catherine, it won't. Once I convert and edit the video, we'll be loading it up to our YouTube channel, and you'll be able to view it on demand at your convenience on YouTube. Um, how do you go about uh, Are shears on a double rod typically broken to the back or to the front? If it's on a decorative rod, Rosemary, all your buckram is broken to the back. If you're putting um, layers on a white traversing rod, all your buckram is broken to the front. And you know, you want to keep in mind, that's another good tip, thanks for bringing that up, Rosemary, is that if you're, again, doing lined and interlined or upholstery weight goods um, or, you know, heavy um, embroidered or tapestry kind of things, you're going to have, you're going to need more clearance particularly if you're layering between um, rods than what is generally, you know, the three inches per layer rule that we've followed for years. So keep that in mind when you're specifying. Do you need a larger space at the motor end as well as the return? Yeah, both, both returns, Cheryl. Specifically, particularly on the motor end, um, I just did some and wrapped it around, and I think I added a full inch and a quarter in addition to the return. Uh, if you have, you know, I, that, I would definitely do that because you can always, you know, bend in the return if you have more, but it's always hard to pull it up into the wall with a, with a hook if you have less, right? Um, web address for Roly. Roly Company is R-O-L-W-E-Y company.com, all one word, rollycompany.com. Um, can you use other fascias on the Glidea track? That's a good question. I'm going to have Tiffany in, um, come in on that one. Can you use the fascias on the Glidea track can be um, either designer's choice or Tuscany, correct, Tiffany? You there? Ella? Nobody wants to talk to me? Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, yes. You... What, I'm sorry, Ellie, you said what? Yes, the fascias can be switched out. Okay, so you can use, you can use designer's choice. You, um, you can use wood, iron, and Tuscany, or the sleek fascia, correct? Yes. Okay, so all of, everything I showed you today is available. And you know what? I spelled really wrong. Thank you, Bonnie. It's... R-O-W-L-E-Y. I should know that. <laughs> uh, brain, de brain spasm. For ceiling mount, is it normal to do a decorative or an, uh, a non-decorative? In a traversing system for a ceiling mount, I think it's just design intent, Dan. Um, the one thing a lot of people don't care for is, you know, when you're using architectural track as a ceiling mount, you still see that white up there. So you can do a traversing system with just end caps and no finials, and at least you could get a nice sleek fascia up on uh, at the top. Um, okay, let me see what else I have here. Um, if you're using a double traversing system with a shear on the back with no rings and stationary panels on the front with rings, how do you measure so the shear doesn't peek out over the stationary panels? <laughs> um, in a double traversing system, it will because you're putting it on one single bracket. And it's the way that it is. So what you actually have to do 
is um, do order two single systems and you would want to do that anyway because you're saying that you're going to do a stationary panel on the front with rings. There might not be a reason or money in the budget to do a traversing system on the front. And so then you're going to order double sets of brackets and it gets pretty confusing back there. So you have to make sure you have enough room and you, and you mount, when you're figuring your mounting heights, you're going to mount um, the, rod, the um, back rod lower so it doesn't show. But keep in mind that if she's drawing that drapery open and closed and you're using a white rod, it's going to show because you mounted it lower. So the compromise is having them peek out over the top of the over drapery or not. And that's just something you're going to talk to your client about and see if she likes it or not. Um, it takes Natalie to get samples. Um, Ella, what's the shipping time if somebody was to order samples? It takes or design? Pardon? Three business days. Okay. Three Perfect. business days. Awesome. Okay, a couple of questions about today's webinar. When will it be up on YouTube? Well, it takes me approximately 48 hours to convert and edit. So sometime over the weekend, look for it Monday maybe. That would give me a little extra time. Today's Thursday afternoon. And yes, we will be offering other webinars. Alice, thanks for asking. Um, typically, we do them on the last Thursday of every month. There are our, um, complimentary, and we'll be sending you out um, information. If you haven't been getting um, the email or it, via email, haven't been getting our information about the webinars, Alice, can you type in your question box, your um, email address, and we'll make sure you get listed on our database. Um, YouTube channel is Orion Iron Art. And thanks, Richard, for the address. And if you're still on, Heather, I could um, please send me yours. Okay. Anything else? Well, guys, thanks for spending an hour with us, and um, just under an hour. Boy, I was I was speedy today. And watch your inbox for September's um, next webinar. Thanks so much for coming. Bye, Ella. Bye, Tiffany.